Ah, I once was blind until my wife gave me the gift of sight with LASIK. And now I don't have to wear glasses anymore. And I was like, no, it's not the same. Hello, and welcome to this little corner of the internet where we get to chat and hang out twice a week, every week, hopefully. I might miss the odd video over the next six weeks or so because with guide dog training and everything, it's a little bit overwhelming. I am very stressed. I am very overwhelmed. I am not in a good headspace. Welcome to my channel where I'm always honest. So I'm trying my best to pre-film all my content but I post every day on Instagram, every day on TikTok, twice a week here. It's a lot of stuff to pre-film in the midst of saying goodbye to Gallup, seeing my brother and his girlfriend for the first time in almost two years, condo demolition starting. It's just a lot happening, so I'm doing my best to stay afloat. And uh, I have no idea when this video is going up, but whenever it goes up, this was filmed weeks ago. <laughs> so yeah, I'm trying to stick with my regular upload and posting schedule. Um, but I'm also trying to forgive myself and be kind to myself knowing that I am under an immense amount of stress and pressure and I can only do so much and I'm only human. So if you're down with that, give this a thumbs up and make sure to hit that notification bell so you're notified every single time that I do upload, which is hopefully Tuesdays and Fridays at 12.30 PST. Um, because I was pre-filming, I was trying to just get like a video that was quick and easy to shoot and Q&A's are always quick, easy, and also I think a lot of fun. You guys always litter my comment section with questions, so I just feel like it's a nice time to sit down and answer some of those questions that you guys are always peppering in the comment section of all the videos that I can't always get to. Also, there's a lot of questions that get asked frequently, um, so having to go through and answer each person individually is difficult. So hopefully in this video, I can answer some of the very common questions that I've been getting asked lately. And uh, so yeah, without further ado, let's get to the questions. How do you know you're putting your clothes on the right way if they don't have tags? This is actually a really good question. Over the last decade or even a little more, I feel like traditional tags that we used to have have been going by the wayside and more and more companies are simply printing a logo um, like, on to the fabric, which can be really difficult to feel. So I have a couple of different tactics that I use. Obviously a top like this is really obvious because the front is high neck and then the back is like crisscross straps. So that's really easy to figure out. But there's other things that aren't as easy. Um, certain things like leggings have a symbol on the back. So these ones have like a tactile Lululemon logo um, and then also in the front seam, they have a pocket. So I kind of look for indicators like that. But again, if it's not easy to tell, um, what I will do is for something like jeans, there's no issue because obviously like there's a button. But for leggings or workout clothes that do not have a super tactile logo, um, I will feel the seams on the crotch gusset. Women who wear leggings will know what I mean. There's often like some form of a crotch gusset built into leggings, which um, like tapers in a certain direction. So I can feel what direction the seams are going in and then I know what's back and what's front. For shirts, I will line the shoulder seam up at the top and then I will feel which has the lower neckline because traditionally um, the lower neckline is in the front. Also, sometimes I do put things on backwards and you can usually like feel it. It's usually quite apparent when you put something on that it is backwards. So those are usually the tactics that I personally use. But if you're blind, please comment down below and share with us how you make sure your clothes are on the right way. Weirdest experience with someone finding out you're blind? I think the weirdest experience of people finding out that I'm blind is always when they either um, get super emotional, like weirdly emotional about it, like apologize to me and get like really upset. You didn't make me blind. There's no need to apologize. It's perfectly fine. If they try to like overcompensate, like it's, it's like the like, oh, I have a gay friend. I have a black friend. Like I think we all minority communities, like we all don't like when you just try to like throw out that you're you like, you're cool with it because you know somebody or like, you know, it's just uncomfortable. Like when people are like, oh, I have a deaf cousin. And I'm like, 
it's not, it's not at all the same thing and also like okay i don't know what you want me to now do with that information like it's just like they're trying to overcompensate to show that they're like cool with it they're comfortable it's fine um when really it just comes off as like you actually feel really uncomfortable and a little bit awkward and don't know what to say um so those situations are always a little bit weird or like one of my favorite all-time experiences was when somebody i like mentioned that i was blind and he was like ah oh, uh, i once was blind until my wife gave me the gift of sight with lasik and now i don't have to wear glasses anymore and i was like no it's not the same like just when people like do like like really weird things like that to try to relate or like oh when i don't have my glasses on things are real blurry and i'm like also not the same thing like it's okay that you can't relate it's okay that you don't have an experience that's relatable you don't have to and you don't need to try to compensate um or i've had people force me quite literally force me to feel their faces like um at this bar in manhattan that happened once um do you remember that mom right 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 yes like, that was really weird she just like really like wouldn't Lued take in yeah wouldn't take no for an answer and like made me feel her face um i had another person like the moment we were having a totally normal conversation for like 10 minutes and then the moment i said that i was blind she was like <gasps> and turned to my friend and was like what happened to her and i was like we were clearly just like conversing totally normally like you don't need to stop talking to me and talk about me to other people in front of me now that you know i'm disabled so i've certainly had a lot of weird experiences but those are all up there would you be disappointed if you got a small dog this time would i be disappointed if i got a small guide dog this time i'm gonna be honest and say yes um i would be a little bit disappointed not like so upset that i'd be like no i don't want this dog but like i'd be disappointed i i prefer larger guide dogs i've always had very tall large guide dogs gallop is almost 100 pounds and very tall um to the point where when he guides me i generally just rest my hand on his back um or when he would guide me sorry it's weird to like talk about him guiding me in past tense i'm still not like not there yet uh but when he would guide me so it was fun because if he didn't have his harness on but i kind of needed him to guide me i could just put my hand on his back where i would lay my hand with the harness and he would he would guide me because it felt the same to him as when the harness handle was on so i just as a petite woman i really like having a large dog it makes me feel comfortable i like how close they are to me. I like the fact that the harness handle is super tight and short. Um, so I don't have like a ton of space between us. Um, it's just a preference. My, my first guide dog was 65 pounds, but very tall. She was really skinny and really tall, like a supermodel. She was 75% um, burner. So she had that real burner height. So it's just what I'm used to. Honestly, for 14 years, I've had tall, large breeds. So it would be weird for me to have a small guide so i'd be a little disappointed but obviously i would know that they gave me that guide because there's reasons that it's the right dog for me like our walking speed temperament um lifestyle experiences as a guide all of those things and no matter what i know i'm going to grow to absolutely adore and love this dog it takes time to grow that bond and that love and that relationship but it does come and i'm trying really hard to not put like a picture in my mind of what i want but that's difficult because I'm also trying to put into the universe what I want and like bring it to me. So I'm trying to be open-minded. Um, I think it's always gonna be challenging, um, but I, I know that even if I'm disappointed and I get a small dog, I will come to find there's benefits to having a small dog. Like traveling on airplanes will probably be a lot easier. Um, being in tight spaces will probably be a lot easier. So I know it'll have its pros if I get a small dog. With accessibility becoming more and more widespread in the gaming community, would you consider trying out a fully accessible game? I would love to get into gaming. I mentioned that in this video I did a few months back, talking about things that I've never done because I'm blind. And gaming was one of those things that I always really wanted to do, but I couldn't really do. Um, growing up, there just wasn't as many accessible games. And even if there was, I certainly didn't have access to them. And so I would really love to get into it. And honestly, I've been like messaging a lot of blind gamers and stuff, trying to get like info, but I haven't really gotten like any feedback. So if any of you are blind gamers or know about accessible gaming, I'm going to pin a comment asking for advice. If you could reply to that pinned comment and let me know like 
what video games you recommend, what video like console that I need to get, controllers, like any of the stuff that I need to know. Just let me know what I need to get because I will get it and I will love it, I am sure. But start me easy. Just keep in mind, I've never gamed before really. So like start me easy. Give me, give me some like, you know, obtainable gaming goals and let me know what equipment I need to get and game and everything and your advice. Um, and if you guys would wanna see videos, like content, me trying as a blind person to game for the first time, then give this a thumbs up to let me know. And yeah, I will definitely do that. Will Lavender be immediately introduced to the new guide dog or will she be staying with your parents for a bit? Um, to be honest, I don't really know. It really depends. I'm going to ask the guide dog school what they recommend. I've never had a cat before, so I've never had to introduce a guide to a cat. So I'm going to ask the guide dog school how they would recommend me do it and I will follow their lead. So definitely make sure you're sticking around for those videos because there will definitely be a introducing my new guide dog to lavender video and there will definitely be an introducing my new guide to gallop video. Or maybe it'll be the same video. I don't know yet. Do you read braille with one or both hands? Like, do you favor one hand or the other? This is a great question because obviously for sighted people, when you are writing, you're either left-handed or right-handed or ambidextrous. If you're lucky, I'm left-handed. And when you braille, you braille with both hands. So you don't have like a dominant hand in terms of brailing. But in terms of reading braille, how at least I was trained, and I believe this is how most people read braille. Um, but sometimes I don't know because like, O and M, sometimes I just assume like, oh, this is how everybody learned O and M. And then I'll get comments and people are like, oh, that's not at all how I was taught to do it. So I don't want to assume that like, just because I learned to read braille one way, that's how everybody does it. I learned to do it with two fingers, my two pointer fingers, so one on each finger, and one kind of reads the braille and the other kind of tracks, like keeps your space, your place. So I would say I usually kind of, um, read with my left finger and kind of keep place with my right finger. So my right finger kind of moves ahead and I kind of, the way they originally taught me was two fingers together and you read like this, then you move the, the left finger back down to the next line, meet it, do, 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 do. Um, but the way I would say I actually read braille now many, many years later is I kind of like trail ahead with my right finger and then I read with my left and kind of like do it like that. If that makes sense. I hope that makes sense. It's hard to explain. What's the hardest part and what's the most rewarding part about going on-site guide dog training? The hardest part is you're obviously stepping away from your entire life for weeks at a time. Sometimes it's up to a month. Uh, I'm hoping to only be going for two weeks, but it could be up to four for some people. My first time was four weeks, second time was three weeks. We're slotting in for two weeks now. I'd say the hardest part is stepping away from your life. You're completely, you know, disconnected from your day-to-day -day activities and that can be challenging especially as you get older like when i was 13 and got my first guide dog it was my summer vacation it was july i would just be at summer camp you know so really just felt like i was going away to a month-long summer camp but now as i'm an adult you have work you have family you have commitments and so it can be very challenging which is why it's great that some schools offer in-home training as an option um, that said, for me personally, I think I prefer, prefer um, in-facility training because of the benefit, which to me is that the very thing that I consider the con is also the pro. You're disconnected from your life, and so therefore your only focus is truly training with this guide dog. And I think that's great because you're not out training in your neighborhood where you're running into people, chatting, saying hi, um, coming back home to do the dishes, cook your dinner. Like, you are Help, what you doing? Did you see the camera got excited? What's going on? I'm right um, in there. I think it's nice to have your sole focus be on training. All your meals are taken care of. You know, they, they clean the kitchen, they cook, they drive you everywhere. Like they, they kind of take care of everything for you. So the only thing that you have to do in life is train and bond with your new dog. And I think that's great. You're not coming home to your partner or your pet and living your normal life whilst training, you're simply training. So I really like that. What job would you want if you didn't do what you do? A couple people actually asked this question and it's funny, it's something that I've been thinking a lot about over this last year of my life and it's really hard to figure out because all I ever wanted to do was work in the entertainment industry. 
Um, so I am doing my dream job. It's not like I had another fallback dream job. This was it. Um, not necessarily YouTube, social media, or public speaking, but working in entertainment as the talent. Um, so like acting, modeling, singing, like just that whole world was what I wanted to do. And so if I wasn't to work in entertainment as talent, I would like to work in entertainment. By the way, I feel like I always need to like say this to anybody when I talk about this, if you're not in the industry, like I'm not saying I'm talented. That's just in the entertainment industry, how you refer to like on camera personality versus like um, the behind the scenes people, if you just call them talent. Um, so um, if I wasn't to be talent, I would still love to work in the entertainment industry. So then I kind of look at like, okay, well, what am I capable of? And this is where being disabled is frustrating because a lot of the things that I would like to do in the entertainment industry as a behind the scenes person, as crew, I can't do, and that sucks. So it's really scary because I work in an industry that is not promised. I don't know what my tomorrow looks like. Everything could disappear like that. And I try not to think negatively, but at the end of the day, it's like a pro athlete. If you tear your ACL and you're a you know, basketball player, that's probably the end of your career. And so like, what are you gonna do next? And obviously just being disabled, I don't have as many opportunities. I don't have as many what's next. Um, it's not sky's the limit. It's actually, there's a lot of limits. There's a lot of things you're not gonna be able to do. You know, so it's definitely more scary. Like I would love to be a makeup artist. That's never gonna happen. Um, I would love to be a personal shopper or a stylist. That's probably never gonna happen. Because yeah, I'm, I'm good at shopping for myself. I'm good at doing my, good enough at doing my own makeup, but I certainly don't have the skills or the vision to be good enough to do it on other people. Um, not without a lot of assistance. And at the end of the day, if you're looking at paying somebody who requires you to also pay other assistants to help them do their job, or you can hire somebody who's gonna do it quick, efficiently and on their own, that's who you're gonna hire. And it sucks, but it's true. And so honestly, I have no idea and it terrifies me. Last question. Did you have any doctors that didn't believe you when you went to them about your disabilities? I'm lucky in that I've never had this experience. Did you have this experience with me, mom? No, no, not with doctors. Yeah, no, we I know I know this is something that a lot of disabled people face But I've never faced this mainly because a lot of it was just very obvious um, My eyes faced in different directions to each other. Um, my head physically bobbled. You can see my eyes shake So there's no question like something is wrong Nobody can try to blame like oh mental health or you're making it up in your head or that's not real That's not happening like all of my disabilities have been like extremely clearly present. And so no, I've never had any doctors question that they weren't real. They've had to dig and dig and dig to find the cause of these different things, but there's never been a question that they're real things that I'm dealing with. Um, and I'm very lucky. And then I think because from a young age, like from four years old, I had been diagnosed with multiple rare conditions and gene mutations. Any time since then that I went in to seek help, there was never a question like, oh, well, her genes are kind of messed up, you know? <laughs> she is kind of already messed up. So there probably may be other things that are wrong. So we're not gonna pretend that they're not there or like she's probably making it up or it's not real because it's proven that in her body, things don't run the way they should. So who are we to say that there might not be more things that aren't running the way they should? So no, I've thankfully never had any doctor for any ailment accuse me of faking. Um, and then the last question, I just put boyfriend because just like everybody, there was tons of questions and there always is. Yes, we are still together. Yes, we live together. We've been together for 15 months. We've lived together for a little over a year now. He works at a tech startup since October, so almost a year now. They've doubled in size since he began, so he's just been grinding really hard at work. Um, he used to work in the second room. He now works at a WeWork. I don't know what else to say. He works very hard. He works really long hours. He's on the engineering side of a tech startup, so there's just like all hands on deck, especially with the amount of growth and success that they've seen. Um, it's pretty all consuming, but yep, everything's, Everything's good and that's really 
all there is to it. Um, I've shared many times this year that there are parts of my life that I now choose to keep more private. So if we could all just stop the questions, there's all the info you need and that I feel like sharing. And that's that. If there's any updates, I'll let you know. Until next time, if you want to see more Molly, you can click over here to see my guide dog retirement party that I threw for Gallup, or you can click over here to see all the things that I've packed for guide dog training. See you next time. Bye.